Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I'm Carolyn. I am your host for this week's weekly mini. This is your bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. I'm just going to adjust my screen. There we go. You can reference all of our previous weekly mini topics on YouTube so that you don't miss a hot second of important acro related topics. I will put the link for that YouTube channel in our comment section as we speak today so that you can uh, subscribe and not miss anything. Now, if you know somebody who would benefit from today's topic, please click the share button on this post right now and let them know that we are here and we are live. Um, on to today's topic. I am really excited about this topic. It is Baton Arts 101, and we are so fortunate to have Mark Nash here to tell us more. Now, before I introduce Mark, I'm gonna give you a little background on it. I'm gonna take my time because we have a lot to talk about, but I think you need to know more about Mark if you don't already know. I know my 14 year old um, baton twirling self is fangirling. After I read his bio, I think you'll understand why. Um, Mark began twirling at the age of three and 20 plus years later, Mark was a multiple national champion in numerous categories and a eight time, that's eight time World Baton Twirling Federation Men's World Baton Twirling Gold Medal Champion. Google Mark Nash after this presentation. Mark Nash, Google it. You will not be disappointed. I can guarantee you. Um, also, Mark danced professionally in various capacities for the Corps de Ballet to principal with the Cincinnati Ballet. Ballet West, Dayton Ballet, and the International Ballet Theater. Mark has choreographed everything from modern works and full-length ballets for several companies and universities to color guard shows. Yes, he also competed in color guard, and he's won various awards for his choreography on and off the stage. He's also choreographed for and taught well-known baton twirlers. His love of choreography has carried him around the world. He is also uh, holds a Master of Arts and a Master of Business Administration from the University of Cincinnati. He's um, also served on numerous and notable positions for the U.S. Baton Twirling Association and the World Baton Twirling Federation. He is a certified World Baton Twirling Federation Master Judge, Acro Adjudicator, and more. <laughs> and Mark, we are so proud that you are currently our U.S. Division Manager for Acrobatic Arts and the co-creator of Baton Arts. Whoo! Welcome, Mark. Wow. Thank you so much, Carolyn. It's great to be here. That, that was quite a list. I hope the audience didn't fall asleep. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they did. I was just going to ask, do you have you slept ever? Like, do you <laughs> I, know. Uh, I get very little sleep, but it's because I just am so interested in so many things. I always want to learn. <laughs> well, we are we are just fortunate for it. So, look, I know that you are incredibly accomplished and that sometimes it's hard to hear those things about yourself. But as everyone can see, you're also incredibly humble. However, we want to talk about another big passion project for you. And we're here today to talk about baton art. So let's not hold back because it's exciting and I'm confident that there are a lot of questions. So just to start us out, I'll let everybody know too that we have um, our very own founder and CEO, Mandy Yip is here with us this morning to help support this conversation and this new initiative. Welcome, Mandy. Good morning. So good to see you guys both. And yeah, I, I also am fangirling just a little bit <laughs> seeing Mark Nash on the call. So I totally get it, Carolyn. Awesome. Well, Mandy, we're, we're glad you're here as well, because as I said, there's there's a little bit to unpack. This is new to anyone in the world of baton. It's going to be new to people in acro and dance as well. But as you can see from Mark's bio, there's a beautiful blend here coming for you. So, Mark, let's talk about it. What is Baton Arts? Okay, Baton Arts is a training company that teaches uh, baton twirling teachers systematic progressions to safely and technically train their dancers or athletes in the sport of baton to be their best. Um, and the thing that's unique about uh, baton arts is that what we do is we take the five areas of baton and we make sure that the baton twirler is progressing together with each of the five areas so they don't fall uh, behind in one area over another. So the five areas in baton are contact full hand, contact flips and fingers, rolls, aerials, and body. And for anybody that's been in acro, they understand that we train acrobatics in the same way in the five areas of acro. So it's, it's very similar in that we are conscientious to make sure that each teacher understands the importance of developing all areas of baton to receive the best results long-term by building a great foundation. 
Okay. So this is, this is a syllabus ultimately, right? This is a syllabus. It's a, it's a syllabus. Um, it, and once again, it follows a similar uh, pattern of acrobatic arts. So there's primary levels of one through six, and that's our module one. So we do train in modules. And then our module two, which is forthcoming, will be level seven and eight in our three pre-professional levels. Okay, so why, why now? Why a syllabus for baton twirling? Well, I think, you know, I'm a lifelong learner and I think if I were learning something new, I would want to start right at the very beginning with a syllabus that I could trust. So the best way to grow your technical knowledge uh, without creating any bad habits is to going to, you know, the best of the field. It's not just me that's running Baton Arts, but uh, Mandy Yip has a background in Baton Trilling. I don't know if everybody knows that out in the in the acro world. Um, uh, Jennifer Marcus, who has had a professional career with Cirque du Soleil and also is a multinational world champion baton twirler. Uh, Lorraine Dermody, who herself is a world champion, has trained them. And it's not all just about athletics, but because we've been so passionate about baton our whole lives, uh, we've also been training world-class athletes and also just athletes that love to twirl on the stage for theater and for uh, public performances. So we're passionate about it. We know it. It's what we've done our whole life and we can't wait to share it with everyone. Okay, I love that. So I, what I get from this is, is that foundational progressional um, program that supports baton, twir well, we'll talk first about baton twirlers, but people interested in baton twirlers. Um, so it's progressional for teachers, it gives them a, a structure to teach from with progressions that are well, let's talk about that. What about these basic progressions is is that you know, something that we typically teach in baton is there foundations for that that we, we use as teachers? Yes, most uh, most teachers will try to teach progressionally. The problem is, is that when you look at baton in the world today, most often you'll be directed to competitive programs or to national bo governing bodies that govern baton. And so it can be pretty daunting to jump into the twirling world because you jump into a world where there's an expectation that you'll already have um, a certain knowledge of the vocabulary and the vernacular they use within the, the medium. And so if you're brand new, it's, you, you know, it's, do I get involved and I don't even know where to start, right? Whereas baton Baton Arts is focused right from the beginning. With our foundations uh, workshop, we teach you what a baton is, what makes a great baton, and then we build from there, from the very, very foundation, teaching you uh, the words to use and, and the knowledge of each of the skills right from the beginning. And then there's no presumption. Another thing I think is that um, when you look into governing bodies, then they're also teaching you along the way, they're teaching you their rules and the regulations to sort of be a part of what they do, whether it's competitions or the expectations if you are um, training progressively with whatever their syllabus may be. It's more about their roles and not just about learning the art of baton. And we're about all about the art of baton. But the beauty is it parallels the two. So if you're learning what we're teaching you with the art of baton, you could easily make the jump if you wanted to, or you don't have to. You could stay in the performing realm. Okay, I love that. And that's the differentiation. Um, I, I, I don't got the right word, but that's the factor that makes it different. And I'm really glad that you spelled that out for us because that leads to two different questions for those who are already teaching baton now. So somebody asked on Instagram yesterday, is it suitable? This was Miss A Ultimate. That's her handle, their handle. Um, is it suitable for experienced baton coaches or should we wait till the next module? So the question really is, why am I going to do this if I've already been coaching baton twirling for years? I'm so glad you asked that. And it's uh, a great question because we just had a training certification this last weekend and we had several uh, baton teachers that have been teaching baton for years and all of them, uh, every single one of them uh, re reached out to us and said, I was amazed. I thought I was just going to try to get through this to get to the next level because I, you know, I've been doing this for years, but I learned so many new uh, trips and ticks to teach skills. And I also, uh, it brought to my awareness some things, some gaps and holes in my training. I thought I was giving my kids all they needed, but now I see that I could actually um, sort of fill in the gaps in my program to make my, my, my students even better. So that's really what it is. You know, you're learning a progressive syllabus, but you're also, it's a double check for yourself to make sure that you're not missing anything along the way. And um, 
Another great thing is that because we're a certification program, you have an opportunity to place your, your students into exams. And I always think exams keep you and your students accountable, right? Because if they're missing uh, any of the five areas of the baton arts, maybe they excel in some areas and then we sort of push them in that area, we forget about these other things. Those end up showing up, especially probably in our module two, but they show up out in the later levels of our module one. And so we certainly don't want that for our, our students. And um, so another beauty is you may not have an opportunity to sort of get that, that reflection because you can mask that in a performance, right? You can just show off what your kids are good at. But um, ultimately, if they'd like a professional career or if they wanna make the jump to sporting or if they want it to be a long-term career, then you don't wanna have skipped any, any areas of their training because it will um, affect them, whether it's through injury, which we don't want, we wanna keep them safe, or through uh, technical paralysis where they can't move past a certain level of where they've gotten. And it always comes down to the basics. So we focus on that. Which is a beautiful thing. And, and I like what you're saying. What I'm taking away from it is, is that no matter what my focus may be, if I want to take it competitively, recreationally, or performance-based, or a mix of all three, I know that fundamentally in my organization, I'm going to have a strong, credible foundation that covers all the bases so that my students have that technical confidence and I have the confidence and their parents know that they're part of something that, and you know, we talk about this with acrobatic arts, that you know, um, year over year, they're going to continue to go back to that foundation, no matter who the teacher is, if they're following the baton arts syllabus. So right. now, um, why would I consider this as a dance studio owner for people who have not introduced baton before in their, in their studio or their organization? Well, there's several reasons. Before I, I, I state those, <laughs> You know, I have a great friend um, who danced with ABT and uh, talks about how she stood behind Brishnikov in the movie The Turning Point <laughs> at Miss Anne Marino. She's a phenomenal ballet artist and um, a great friend of mine. And she texted me when, when she started looking into really what I did about 10 years ago, she texted me and she said she was amazed. And it was just a short while ago that she said, I see that uh, baton trolling is trending and I see it as sort of the next interesting art form that people are going to want to jump on board with. So I just think that I thought that was fun and I hope she's right. And we feel that way. We're starting to see a surge in, in the interest of Baton and we like to be on the, the cutting edge of that to make sure that we offer that to uh, all of our, our clients. I also, um, you know, if you're going to offer this, you're obviously creating a new income stream for your studio, which is phenomenal because you're able to offer more things to, you know, to stay ahead of the curve, like I said. Um, but you're also teaching your kids uh, a new way of movement and a new coordination. Baton trolling takes a great amount of coordination. And so that also sort of fits nicely in with the dance um, uh, technical aspects. And then, um, you know, baton trolling, once you understand some basic skills, you really become good at prop manipulation in general. So, right? So whether you're twirling a hat, a cane, it really doesn't matter on stage, a chair. I've twirled, I can't tell you how many things, umbrellas and all sorts of things on stage. So once you understand how things move and how your body can manipulate them, you become a great prop manipulator, which also opens your opportunities as a performer. Um, and just, you know, that hand-eye coordination, it's, it's a phenomenal thing that really benefits kids in all areas. Um, and also, why not challenge your, your teachers and your kids to try something new? I think they'll love it. Once they learn that they can do it and they get past the fear of being hit with a spinning metal rod, <laughs> because it does hurt when you're, when you're first learning, if you're not learning properly, right? So we take, we take the hurt out of baton. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's true, though, for, you know, um, there is, and we talk about that, we're not going to go down the path of pain, but I do know that that's what part of the, the learning proper technique is, even for something like aerial arts and acrobatic arts, we learn how to, to sit properly, we learn how to fall properly so that we protect ourselves, and that comes in baton twirling, because yes, you are hurtling a large metal stick in the air at times, and, when, and well, maybe not when you're first starting, but even so, some of the smaller things <laughs> can cause pain, as many of our participants know from this weekend. But anyway, um, what I wanted to get onto was, um, okay, so what if I've 
this is something that came up this past weekend and, and people that you're talking about that prop manipulation, things like that. What if I incorporate this into my studio or into my class and my students are progressing up to the further levels of the syllabus, but I can't do the, like, I can't do those things anymore. I can't demonstrate them. I myself can't do them. H how does that work? Because some of the people that, you know, this may appeal to have never picked up a baton in their life. And if they have, it was only for a brief period of time. It's a bit daunting to think that you're going to teach something that you've, you yourself has, have never done. Some. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense. When you look at anything from the outset, right, when you look at the highest levels or, or the finished product or something, it can seem daunting. But the beautiful part is once you understand the basic foundational elements of baton throwing, you don't have to be able to do all that. Just like an acro, right? We can teach our kids back handsprings and aerials, but based on our age or experience, we may or may not have ever done them or be able to do them. But we can still be a great teacher because we understand the biomechanics of it. And it's the same thing with baton throwing. Once you understand the basic foundational twirls and skills, the patterns and directions that batons can and should twirl in, um, how things lead from one skill to another, then um, the sky's the limit because you'll be able to break down uh, each skill and you'll be able to teach them without having to do them yourself. So it's, it's really quite a, a beautiful thing, but it's no different than acro or any other dance genre for that matter. Great point. I think, yes, you bring up an excellent point. And just, yeah, I, I think that um, for somebody like me, who was a formal baton twirler that took this course, I twirled for many years, but took a big break. And so now I'm not that, you know, I'm not, I'm not teaching at 20 anymore when I'm just coming off that career and can still do many things. Now you're really forced to break down the biomechanics and really understand what you're teaching, which in my opinion, makes you a better teacher. So for, I, I would concur with you that those people who have taught before, twirled before, coming back to it, or a 30 year career or more, that, you know, personal and professional development is so powerful and how that feeds back into your students and the continuation of what you already know um, is quite powerful. So that that is a huge thing, I think, for people. So if there are any questions, we're coming to the end here, if there are any questions for Mark or for Mandy, feel free to post those now in the chat, in the comment. Um, Mandy, I just wanted to reach out to you. Is there anything in what Mark um, said that you wanted to expand on or um, articulate in a different way? No, I, I think Mark did a beautiful job of explaining what we're doing. And uh, I love that baton twirling is trending and we're seeing studio owners and dance teachers who maybe didn't take baton as a kid or maybe like you said took it for a year or two um, interested in implementing that in their studio so that's that's been really amazing to watch that happen and I mean what a better person than Mark to uh, there is no better person than Mark to put this all together um, and with the the help of Jennifer Marcus and Lauren Dermody who are both uh, icons in their own right I think we've put together something that is really beautiful and will help anyone from the high level coach who just needs uh, better support on those basics to a brand new teacher who's never taught baton before. Okay, fantastic. Now, I don't want to let you go right quite yet. So everybody percolate on those questions you might have because you've got uh, the two best people to answer these questions about baton arts here and now live. Um, but I want Mandy to, we talk about syllabus. What does that look like in acrobatic arts and baton arts? We talk about the app uh, and that resource that it is. And I think it's underestimated what the power in this app is that will help you as a teacher, a new teacher, experienced teacher in helping your students. So Mandy, do you want to share your screen and show us um, the baton arts app that's been developed for the syllabus? Yeah, absolutely. Let me know when you can see what I've got here on my screen. Perfect. So this is the Baton Arts app. It follows the same format as all of our other apps. We have one for acrobatic arts and we have one for aerial arts as well. So you can find our entire syllabus by clicking this button here. And as Mark said, there are currently six levels. The other ones are in development. And when you click on any of those levels, you'll see the 28 skills that are required for that level, uh, which is really great because maybe you don't know how to do all of these things, or maybe you knew how to do these things at one time, but can no longer do them. Um, and just like, I'm not performing any back handsprings anytime soon or back layouts uh, it's so nice to have this a uh, resource so that I can show the students what it's supposed to look like when they're learning it and they don't have to watch me try and fumble through something do it incorrectly so here's an example of a dancer doing a very beginner skill this is a pre thumb flip and you can 
zoom in nice and close on her and you can slow it down a little bit so that you can really see what she's doing. Um, our apps all have previous and next progressions listed, so that is a really great function. I can go to the next hardest thing by just clicking this button here and it will take me up a level to the next hardest skill. I can then go backwards to where I just was or I can keep going forwards to more and more difficult skills in the syllabus. So that really makes it easy for you ha to have multiple levels in one classroom, which often we have. I really love this featured section of the app because it has all kinds of great tools for teachers, uh, including tutorial videos where we have some of the best teachers in the world explaining to you how to teach things. And there's also printouts that you can use in class to keep your students motivated and working both in class and at home. So here's an example of a flexibility sheet that you might send home and they would click off every day of the month that they completed their flexibility exercises. With this little button here, you can just email that straight out to your dancers or your twirlers, which is so awesome. Uh, I also really love the coloring pages because they are absolutely adorable. So I'll just show you a few of my very favorite. This is a fishtail. I mean, how cute is that little twirler in there? And I also really love Ella's for loops, but we have the entire alphabet. So to see the whole thing, um, you have to check that out. It's really quite, quite good. And then we have these progress cards. And this is really the meat and potatoes of any syllabus is to have a place where the dancers or twirlers uh, can keep track of their progress and make sure that they're not missing any important elements in the curriculum. So you can see that in this level four card, we have the five different divisions of baton twirling. And in each one, there are skills that the dancers have to master. And when they get them, they can put their little sticker here or a check mark, or maybe their teacher is gonna initial that. And when all of these boxes have been filled out, then they have completed their level four card and they're ready to move on to level five. And again, this makes it easy for you to have multiple levels in one class. It also helps the twirlers to, to see that they are making progress, because sometimes you, you can't tell when you're in it, but when you see all of those stickers start to appear, then you start to feel like you've actually uh, made progress and, and are moving forward. This part is one of my favorite parts of the app. It allows us to both video our dancers and play it back for them so they can see what they look like. And then also to compare them with the videos that are on our syllabus. So I'm going to do a quick example of what that would look like. We're going to have uh, our uh, example do their toss reverse illusion. And then I'm going to pick a student here doing their toss reverse illusion and click compare. And so now we can see these two twirlers both trying the skill at the same time and we can see what's going right and wrong by just watching them and comparing one to the other uh, the dancer on the bottom is tossing the baton out they're hiking the baton up whereas the one at the top here is tossing right from the belly button so the baton goes straight up and down you can also see a break in the body and we have this awesome function on here that allows us to put these videos one on top of each other which can also really help us to see where the problems are occurring. So now you can really see that break in the body when we do it that way. So that is another awesome tool. Our manuals here, we have our, all of our lesson plans that are minute by minute. So if you don't know how to put together a baton twirling lesson plan, no problem. It's all there for you with videos and everything and we have this great part with other tutorials from some of the best baton twirlers that have ever lived so uh, that is really cool too to see those baton twirlers come back and show things that they are known for things that are are named after them which is really quite quite neat as well that's awesome i i can't wait to look at m for monster roll and um honestly like the the superimposing the uploading of your own student doing that skill and to cross check that to be able to put it beside superimpose slow it down and then to be able to show them i mean oh my gosh where was that technology like 30 years ago i mean wow i i'm i'm like i said i think that the apps are really underestimated and for those of you who are teaching these tools are remarkable it excites me it makes me want to it makes me want to do it like i'm like let's do it so it's not about me though it's about people out there who have questions who want to know more um so jamie nord asks and, and maddie this is a question for you will there be acro well actually it's for either of you but because it makes sense to me now but will there be acro intertwined into the baton arts program 
So we think that acrobatic arts is an integral part of baton arts and aerial arts. Um, they work congruently with each other. In fact, some of the skills transfer directly over. Um, and absolutely, acrobatics and dance is a really important part of baton twirling. If you do go and Google Mark Nash, which I highly recommend you do at the end of this uh, little meeting, uh, go and check out his, his performance from... 2004 called Maria and you will see all of those elements beautifully intertwined together where he's going to toss the baton and do three walkovers and catch it behind his head I think or where do you catch that mark? I just I, <laughs> do you? Okay I think there's one where you catch it behind your head but anyways there's so they're doing all of the acrobatics but then it's also done with music so this so in this performance he's doing uh, a performance to Maria from West Side Story and so the artistry and the emotion and all of that gets beautifully mixed together uh, and it all matters so the short answer is yes acrobatics is definitely part of a taunt rolling. Thanks for that question, Jamie. Good question. Um, so before we go, I think there's one one more thing I, I you know for teachers, studio owners, experienced teachers, what if they're on the fence about all of this, um, about investing again or into something new, what is your what are your thoughts on that, Manny? Sure. So with anything if that you want to offer there is going to be an investment in the training materials in order to offer something really properly and baton arts the investment of baton arts is maybe a few hundred dollars but when you look at what you can bring into your studio as far as bringing um, more revenue in through new students in new classes it far outweighs the cost of that app so I think that we have to think of it the same way we would as any other dance class, a jazz class, a tap class, a ballet class, where you're going to have a group of, you know, 10 to 12 kids in the classroom, and all of them are paying that monthly tuition, and that monthly tuition is then covering the costs of these tools that are going to help to, to support those programs. I'd like to add to that, if I could, Mandy, that I, I think one thing we didn't touch on, we really focused on baton arts as uh, it relates to baton twirling. But you know, there are so many sister art forms to baton twirling out there too. So think about that when you're thinking about implementing in your studio. You can invite people from the martial arts, from local color guard groups, from rhythmic gymnastics, from the circus arts, juggling, stunt and stage combat. I mean, baton twirling can really, because of the skills involved, can really elevate all that. I mean, we've all seen Star Wars and we've seen Darth Maul fighting with his lightsaber and doing side aerials and, and flipping it. Well, he was a baton twirler. So, you know, they use uh, uh, baton twirlers as stunt doubles in superhero movies all the time. And it's just a great thing. I just, just think outside. It's not just maybe the girls and boys marching in the band, but um, it's really so much more ubiquitous if you think about it. Absolutely. With this. I would agree. And I, I love, yes, it's such a great point. Something people should keep in mind because one question we got from Lori on Instagram was um, when is Baton going to go mainstream? And I think what you're hearing from Mark is that it already has. It's, it's the OG of all of those things. It is, you know, uh, prop manipulation. It's, it's what we see in, in theater and dance um, with props and spinning staffs and combat, even those people who are interested in fight choreography. So um, really, think outside the box beyond because it does exist as a sport and people marching in a band but there are so many other aspects and possibilities to baton twirling so with that we have no further questions um, just inspiration is there anything else either of you would like to add before we close we can't wait to meet you you're gonna love it you know i i even if even if you've taught baton trolling for years and years and years, you are going to love it. You will find things that you love about it, new things, uh, ways of thinking about things you never thought of before, inspiration. And that app is also uh, going to just continue to grow. It's, it's an incredible resource. So there's inspiration there in terms of accessory things. And as Mandy said, all of the um, past champions and things, we're, we're working to get them to contribute because they have so much to offer. We wanna share all of that with you. We absolutely do. So Mandy and Mark, thank you so much for your time today. Teachers, thank you for joining us for this weekly mini. Uh, next week, we will be back with more tips and ideas from 
Acrobatic Arts will be back in the studio. You can learn more about Baton Arts at batonarts.com or more about Acrobatic Arts at acrobaticarts.com. Join us again next week. Thank you everyone so much for being here. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.